Okay, so um, what we've done so far is in the previous um, episode, we looked at what does Islamic tradition tells us approximately 240 years after the death of Muhammad, how the Quran is compiled. And um, Dr. J. Smith left you with a couple of questions. Let's pick it up from there. As we are going to talk about the Dan Brubaker's book on the corrections in the early Quranic manuscripts with the 20 examples, let's move it. Why? Move on that. Why, at the first place, a Christian thinks that he can put um, a book like this together? Why do we need it? Because, you know, Jay, you know better than me, Quran has been perfectly preserved. Okay, that's the claim that is made. And if, once you make that claim, you need to prove it. You need to support that. That is a historical claim. Anytime you make a historical claim, for heaven's sakes, support what you're doing and don't just slag off anybody who, de, who uh, c comes up with questions. What has happened is, in the Islamic tradition, there is no, well, in the Islamic world, there is no tradition of, of what we call a critical analysis of both the book or the man. In some cases, you question the book, you question the man, Muhammad, it's a capital offense. So we're talking about a difficulty that every Muslim scholar has. How can you criticize or how can you critique the Quran as we've done with the Bible in the West? How can you even have that kind of criticism without, uh, without, with, with, and still remain healthy? So Bible, which claims to be the word of God, is open for the critique. And even you can just go to the bookshop and buy the critical yeah. of additional of the New Testament. It is accessible to everyone. I do have one in my study room. But if I go to the bookshops, I cannot get the critical additional of the Quran. Absolutely not. I think that is something Muslim needs to think and consider. What are they trying to hide? And we must have asked that, I don't know how many times, on Sunday when we asked our adversary, what have you done? Uh, he claimed that he had done this. He had done corrections. So we said, well, okay, what corrections have you done? How many have you got? <laughs> I don't even recall him ever answering that question. I don't know how many times I asked him, show me what you have done. Show me what anybody has done. Uh, since Sunday, most of the people that who have been responding to me by email who have watched that video that we put up, you can get it on DCCI and you can get it on Fander Films. Go look at the video that we did at the Speaker's Corner. Most of the people that are asking have come back to me and said, well, certainly someone has done, has done a critical edition. Certainly someone has actually looked into these consonal variants. I said, that someone does not exist within the Muslim world. If they are, I'd like to know who they are. Yeah. Now, even our adversary who was there, who did not, who refused to answer that question, what we finally did is we said, well, let's just look at what Dan has done, because Dr. Brubaker was the one that decided to do this as his doctoral thesis. He was influenced by Dr. Keith Small. Keith Small, who lives not too, lived not too far from here in Oxford, uh, he, uh, he's a friend of both of ours. He now has passed away, sadly, just last year. But he was the one that first, I know, in our circles, started to ask this question. Yeah. What are we going to do with the... A critical edition of the Quran, trying to find out what exactly what existed at the time of Uthman, or immediately after, because at that time when he started, we all assumed it was Uthman that actually put the Quran together. Since that time, people like Dan Brubaker have come alongside. From 2010 to 2014, those four, in that four year, he went and he went to six major manuscripts, the same six that Altikulic and Ekmelin Salalu had gone to, and these were the Topkapa manuscript, which is in the Topkapa Istanbul? Museum in, in Istanbul, uh, the Samarkand manuscript in Tashkent, uh, the Ma'il manuscript, which is right here in the British Library. I was just there this morning. Uh, it's not on display, by the way. Interesting, they've taken it away. I wonder. Pro no, maybe they are studying. You never Possibly know. they're studying. The 2165 manuscript, the Petropolitanus manuscript, which is in the Bibliothèque Nationale in Paris, the Husseini manuscript, which is in Cairo, in Egypt, and then most exciting, the one I like the best, the one I think that's going to be the most damaging, is the Sana'a manuscript, which is there in Sana'a in Yemen. So those are the six major manuscripts. He also looked at four others. He also yeah. went to St. Petersburg, the Marcel 1 and 2, uh, named after the man who did the study on it. Uh, you have the one in Doha in, in uh, Oman. Uh, he, he also looked at a, two more that were in Istanbul, and another one, the Fustat manuscript, which is in Egypt. Yeah. So he looked at all these manuscripts, and he was given access to them because he was getting a doctoral thesis on this. He was given access. He made relationships. You have to make relationship with the people who own the manuscripts or that are in libraries or in museums. That's where you always find him. He made relationship with them. He was able to have. They, he was able to go and actually get them out of their encasings, open up all the pages with gloves. 
and or he had someone them. else who did the opening and he took pictures of all of them took yeah. pictures of all of them so uh, you can get all the details in the book everything is accessible in the book and book is remember available in amazon so as dr dan burubaker put this together i remember uh, you actually introduced this material to shabir ali a couple of years back I, I, so I, people had a chance to think through but right. since then Um, Dr. Well, Dan Burubaker's research let, extended. Let me, let me back up. He introduced, he told me about it and I went to visit him. He had come through London a few times and every time he came to London, he was looking at the Mutyal manuscript, this 2165. And I, you know, we'd go out for coffee and he'd tell me what he was doing. And I would say, ooh, that's interesting. Uh, I remember having, having a conversation with him and he, I said, well, how many variants are you looking for? He said, well, if I could find five, I'd be excited. Five, I said, that would be great because if you find one, That means it cannot be eternal. That means that there it is has man's intervention because if it is preserved by God, the Quran is very clear that it's well preserved. I mean, I just look here, chapter 10, verse 4, chapter 10, verse 15, chapter 15, verse 9, and chapter 18, verse 27. It's very clear that the Quran is preserved, preserved in, above in all In chapter others. 15, verse 9, Allah promised to preserve. So, Yet in 1591, it talks about the corruption of it, but that's a different topic. So... 15, I, and you, you, what, what you need, when you see those claims from within the Quran itself, and every Muslim believes those claims, and every Muslim I've ever talked to for almost 40 years, doesn't even question that. When I heard Dan questioning it, I was saying, whoa, 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 wait a minute, this is rather controversial. And I remember a number of years ago, back in about 2011, and 2012, every time Dan came through, I said, Dan, what are you finding? And he says, wait till you find out what I'm finding. So in 2014, he finally gave his doctorate, passed it, his thesis for flying colors at Rice University. And then he gave it to me in PDF form. And I looked at it and I said, I've got to, I've got to uh, uh, challenge Dr. Shabir Ali to a debate. Now, Dr. Shabir Ali, as many of you know, is probably the leading authority in the Muslim world uh, in this area as a debater. I wouldn't say he's a leading authority in... I, I'm not sure if we can make that claim, but he's one of, the, one of the best debater. In this area. I don't know. If he, can you, do you know anybody who can debate this better than him? Um, I, would, uh, I would say Yasir Qadir did good work on... Yasir Qadir only But he's talks not about, a debater. He's Yasir not a Qadir debater. only talks about Kira in Ahruf. He does not understand manuscript evidence. If you look at his videos, and I would love to debate him on this because he's not, he's, he doesn't get what Dan Brubaker is doing. Nonetheless, wait, either way... Uh, so Dan Brubaker was hunting for five intentional corrections 15 he would have loved yeah guess how many he found over 4000 no 800 oh in back in, We're the in 2014 yeah, sorry this is in 2014 he found 800 man i said i've got to dis i've got to debate this and so we had the debate i went first and all i did was to show them up from a distance i didn't i wasn't permitted to actually actually have anybody look at them i just wanted to show them from a distance which i did and you can see me hand, holding them up but i'm not really showing anybody else that other than that i'm not unpacking them i'm not looking at them i'm just going and saying here are some insertions here are some erasers here are some coverings here are some tapings here are some erasers with over uh, written over top here are some corrections or uh, coverings written over that's all i said and i think i came up with seven different or i used dan's uh, Uh, delineations of seven different categories. Now, at that time, Shabir Ali really had no response. Well, he did. The number 19. The miracle of the number 19. Yeah. That was 2014. I then wanted to go and actually go full tilt on this, but I had to be careful because we want, they were still doing an awful lot of studies. And since 2014, up until today, they have now found, as you say, how many? Over 4,000. Over 4,000. 4,000. It's not only he, there are others. There's others who are working with him. There's others who are working alongside him, others who are working in other areas. Michael Marx out of Germany is doing this. Uh, we do know that there are three scholars that I know of personally. I'm not permitted to give their names yet because they're still doing their doctorates. They have to have the freedom to do so. Isn't that odd that I can't even give their names? But they will. They'll come public. Uh, there's one that is doing his doctoral thesis on the Sana'a. Another is doing his doctoral thesis just on the Topkapi, just those two. And then a third one who's doing his doctoral thesis on all the manuscripts, kind of carrying on from what Daniel yeah. Brubaker did. So that's what's going on right now. So this, there, this now, 2019, we needed someone to publish this. We needed someone to go public with it. Dan has done it. That's why this book is the first to do that. This is the first book that has gone public to actually show you. You can go up and see them. You can look at them. He explains them. He shows you where these insertions, these corrections have come from and he shows you which and he's not just using one manuscript 
I think he's only using about five or six manuscripts here. He's not going through all of them. Yeah. He's just giving a cross section as a taster. This is a nothing more than an appetizer. Yeah. So he put the book together. Remember, you can buy that on Amazon. So let's go through the. Uh, You're starting fund. to sound like a saleswoman. <laughs> I am not. I, I don't think I can sell things. It's not my gift. But anyway, there are there are a couple of things is important in Christian life. We we are people who God give us brain to um, use it. So we read it. We ask questions, and in the our reading um, list. This book is one of the book. If especially you are engaging with Muslims, you read it, you learn it, and you use it. Okay. What we're going to do is we're going to go through all 22 of these, okay? Yeah. So let's start with the first one. I'm going to hold it up here, but then I'll, we're going to put I'll it, do the holding. We'll put the slide right up on the screen. So now the slide's up on the screen. I want you to look at the green arrow. Can you see the word that has been... I can, first of all, can you so, notice there are two letters that okay, have been added? Let, let's just put the structure here. So this is Surah 9, verse 72. Okay, and we are looking at the top couple. And the reason why it's important that we use start with the top couple is because it's one <laughs> let me of give those. some historical background. And I and I, I I asked Dan to put some there in the top couple because when we started this debate, I remember back in the 1990s, people like Adnan Rashid, he got up in public and said there are a hundred thousand of these manuscripts that we can trace back to. Yeah, I, I do hear that quite a lot. And then when it came down, it, it, it was reduced to 10,000. Then it was reduced to 1,000. By 2014, it was reduced down to six. And then when uh, Asma Hilali came out with her book on the sauna manuscript and the palimpsest, the two lower layers, it was uh, last year in August of 2018, it was reduced even just to one. And the one was the Topkapi. That, that, uh, people, the ones that we have been going uh, back and forth with, most of the Muslims that I am now um, debating with on this issue really only are supporting the Topkapi. Yeah. Why the Topkapi, do you think? Um, so that's one of the earliest one and most complete one. It it's is the most complete, complete of all of yeah. them. Yeah. So in Topkapi, we don't have a um, little bit of Surah 5. We don't have Surah 1. And I think beginning of Surah 2, maybe. Um, and I then there's lots of, of, of problems because it's, it's, gone, it's had uh, a lot of water damage. Yeah. So, um, so we are now looking at the top couple of Musaf. This is Surah 9, verse 72. Um, explain it to us, Jay, well, what here, we have. As you can see, you, can, you see a hua. Hua is, means, okay, hua means that is. Uh, in, in the tra if you translate the whole script, uh, I, I don't want to do the Arabic. Well, I'll do the Arabic. Ridwanun min alahu. Akbaru Dalika, Hua Fauzu Al Azim. Excuse me for those who so are. So we are speakers. we are not Arabic speakers, but you can um, you can see it when we put it on the screen. Now what it says now with the Hua that is it now says and Allah's good pleasure is greater. That is the great triumph. So the word that is Hua has been added, and if you look at it carefully, you notice it's in a different nib. It's much smaller. It's blacker. Where, the, where we're pointing, and it obviously is not big enough to be part of the original text. So the question is, while the phrase that is doesn't change that much meaning, why someone, after many script has been written down, why someone else who wasn't the original scribe went and put that word in it? Do you know the answer? The I answer is, because this now supports the 1924 Huff's text. Yeah. So there was something intentional done to make them all the same. To make it, uh, make, to standardize it. Standardize. It has now been standardized. Okay, so hold that's on to the that. Example one. What is the Huff's okay. 1924 tech? We'll come back to that. Yeah. Let's do number two. So, so this is Surah 42, verse 21. And this is in the Petropolitanus manuscript, which yeah. is the BNF one that's there in the Bibliothèque Nationale de France. That's what BNF means. Uh, it is around 27 percent of the Quran. Uh, it is uh, it is housed in Paris, but it is François de Roche that's in charge of this manuscript. Yeah. He's done the most work on it. And what you notice that there are, this is the second of about three instances of lahum in this verse. Now, the original had lam he, just the lam he, not the mim. The mim, that's a, the third letter, did not exist there. It just yeah, had lam he. So they've erased it. So here's an eraser. And now they've written over top in another ink, in a blacker ink, a darker ink, lahum. And lahu means for him. So now the original used to say, or do they have associates who enacted for him? It now says, or do they have associates who enacted for them? It's made from singular up to the plural. Now, why did they have to do this? 
Because that changes. That's another intentional corrections in one of the earliest manuscripts. And the reason they had to do it is because in the 1924 Huff's text, it is for them, not him. So they had to erase it right over top of it at a later date and make it from uh, uh, from him to Lamhe to Lahum. In a sense, this confirms that when we look at, when we hear the claims comes from Muslims regarding. Quran dot by dot, letter by letter, word by word has been preserved. We see it was important for Muslims to make one standard. So as they looked at the manuscripts in somehow, they saw the need of making those corrections. Okay. Third example. Here's a third example. Now, this is really interesting. Take a look. And we're, we've actually put up this. Dad Actually, this has is done one this. of my favorite ones. He has put up nine different, uh, nine different verses in the Fustat manuscript which is the Fustat Umayyad codex. The one, this is the one in Egypt. This is the one in Egypt and it's fascinating because when you look at that you can see if you look carefully you can see Allah has been added at a later date. In they forgot case, Allah. Nine different places where Allah is missing. Actually Dan has found 12 of them in this manuscript. He just has nine featured here. That is sad because Allah is the most important being after Muhammad, after Muhammad, yet as scribes now, wrote see, it down, they forgot. In order to what she just said, you're going to have to look at her videos, because uh, for Hatun, she has proved that actually Muhammad is the most important, and Allah is secondary. <laughs> but that's for right now, let's just say yeah, Allah different. is very, very important for all Muslims. Not the most, but very, very important to the Muslims, yet they forgot put Allah in the verse. The one word you should not forget, the one person you should not forget, God himself. And the fact is that it's obvious, therefore, that when this was first written, none of these Allahs were there. So as they intentionally correct the manuscripts, this is another example for that. Okay. Here is a, probably one of the most damaging. Okay, and so this is the Surah 30, verse 9. We're number four, the fourth one. And you can obviously see where the eraser is. It's a huge smudge. Uh, what is fascinating, this, uh, this is the, what they call the Marcel II. This is from St. Petersburg in Marcel. Russia. Marcel is the man who did the study. Yeah, yeah. That's why they've named it after him. Yeah. And uh, the, the, they've erased it with nothing to replace it. Okay? And the eraser is between Akibatu, the fate, and the word Aladina of those, the fate of those. Which makes sense. But what was there in between? We will never know. We will never know what people wrote down. It's obvious. But why did they erase it? it well, it's because... It, it wasn't now, matching with the it one It matches there. the Huff's 1924 text. We keep on saying that. What do we mean? We'll get to that. You'll see why this is important. But once they have erased it and covered up what they... What, what should, which was obviously there to begin with so this is this cannot be a scribal error am i correct that is something done intentionally that is intentionally okay. done as a censorship so the fifth example is from surah 6 verse 91 to 97 this is actually a very disturbing picture you can see this is the picture that's on the cover of the book yeah this is the one that's on the cover of the book and this is this comes is. from the museum of islamic art in doha in Qatar. So this is... The, I've been there. You've been there? You've been actually to that building? You've been to that museum? Yeah. No kidding. Did you yeah, see this that, manuscript? Okay, that's a different topic. Well, that's interesting. I've not been there, so you've been somewhere I've, I've been. been. There. Okay. Yeah. Now the word, if you look at it, let's take a look at the very... Look at number one. Look at the yellow number one. The word, look at the number yellow one, and you <laughs> see the word Elahi against him has been written over an eraser. So there's an eraser there first. This has been written over the eraser, uh, and this is at chapter 6, verse 93, following the word bima kuntum takulun, for what you, plural, used to say. Now, what's interesting, Elihi is not in the Huff's text, the 1924 Huff's text. Now, look at number two. So hold on that. There's okay. Elihi. Yeah, so now that's we're looking the at number two. two. Out on the margin, away from the text itself, you have Allah, Allah, about Allah is what it is. It's been written in the margin, but it oddly, without erasing the Elahi, where it's supposed to replace it. So they have written over Elahi. This is one. Number one. And then now they've written number two, Allah, Allah. That should be where Elahi is, because that's not in the 1924 text. They forgot to get rid of it, so they put it in the margin. So you can see that that is a two errors already that we're looking at. Yeah. 
And then the third one is um, clearly you can see there is an insertion. This is Aladina, whom has been inserted where it was at first omitted. So not only did they first write it there, then they wrote over top and realized, oh, they needed to keep it there. So they thought first, evidently you can see what was going through the mind, or maybe there had been something else there, we're not sure. Well, what we do know now is they've now put it back in again so that it corresponds with the 1924 Huff's text. Now let's and go to number four. And then the fourth one is you can see, um, hopefully, it is um, written over an eraser. Well, this is Yah Lamun, they know has been written over an eraser. So there's, they've erased something that which we can't see, and they've put Yah Lamun there. The shadow of the original is almost there, and if you look carefully, according to Dan, he thinks it is B H M. W M. Those are the consonants that he can read. What that word is, we don't know. But what they have done by putting uh, Ya La Moon there, they now have managed to bring it back standardized to the standard yeah. text. So for the details of the, each picture and each example, you can get that more detailed in the book. So we looked, we're looking at four errors or four corrections or four manipulations. Only in one page. In just Half one of page. the page, yep. So here's the example six. This is the Surah 5, verse 93. Again, you can this see comes the... from Doha, from Qatar, from the, uh, the Museum of Islamic Art. And here, look at number one. Uh, and I've got number one Insertion. and number two. Yeah. You can see visually. Can you see that there's an entire line that has been written between the lines? And we can see it is not by same scribe because now when the in, in when the sentence inserted, you can see the dots in it. So by the time when the dots are edited, it has been done by someone okay. else. Okay, what has been inserted is wa amilu al salihat tuma ataku wa amilu. Okay, you are destroying the Arabic. Just let's do the English <laughs> version of it. Now, except for the first two wa amilu, the rest could be a copyist there. You're right, which then had to be rewritten into the text and above the line at a later date. But not wa amilu. That has been added and it needs to be added because it's in the 1924 text. Yep. Now look at number two, the yellow number two. Here, the initial aleph uh, of, of the word ahsanu, do good, which is imperative, third per, uh, person plural, was omitted when it was first written and then was had to be added later, but in a completely different ink. Can you see the arrow is pointing to the red aleph that had to be added in at a later date? This same red ink was also used for the diacritical dots added at a later date, proving that this aleph was added at this later date. That means it wasn't by the same scriber and it wasn't at that time someone intentionally at that later. Along with the diacritical marks, they added the aleph. They had to do so because of the problem of paralleling or yeah. corresponding. So that's exam this is example 7. This is Surah 23. Verse 86 and 87. Now here we go back. This is the Petropolitanus again, which we saw earlier. And this is an insertion of the word the seven. Okay. Uh, Al-Sabi. The seven was added by a later scribe to Surah 23, Ayah 86. That's the number one, uh, where you see the number one yellow is. Okay. I just want to emphasize something. It is not written by the same scribe. It is written by someone else later. How do you know? I will just look at the examples. Write, writing, writing style is different. It's a different nib, yeah. different then, pen, yeah. different time, different scribe. Yeah. So it now reads, say, what, who is the Lord of the seven heavens and the Lord of the great throne? Before it just, it, uh, uh, which is interesting because it has the word sevens, uh, the oh, heavens, oh, which yeah. is plural. So it, 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 you should just say, who's the Lord, Lord of the of heavens? heavens. Yeah. But before we go on, I just want to show you another one. Take a look at the bottom now, oh, number sorry. two. There is an insertion of the, uh, of the letter Aleph in front of Lilahi, Allah's, uh, Allah's, which was added in Surah 23, I 87. Note that it was written with a, narrow, um, a narrower nib, proving it was added later by another scribe. Yet this Aleph, is not found in the 1924 Huff's text, suggesting that the correction goes against the text. They should have done that. Now here you can see where they have inadvertently put an, an aleph in there. A later scribe did that. And if our Muslims are correct, remember that this is one of the things, this is, if you, this is nothing more than scribal Scri error. I would say that's a scribal error because it doesn't belong there. It shouldn't be there. And it does not make sense with it there. And it does not support 
the 1924 okay. text. Okay, so that was the another example. Let's move to the next example. So this is our new example. That's number eight. Example eight, and this is Surah four, verse 149. Yeah. Now this one is also from Doha, in Qatar. And what's fascinating, this is a damaging one, quite damaging, because here you have, they've raced it intentionally, then they've written over, over top it. of it. Fa'ina laha afwan kadayran, which means so surely Allah forgiving, powerful. Now, currently the word Allah of chapter 4, uh, verse 149 49. has been replaced by Allah Kana, which means Allah is, employing an eraser and then overriding. By doing that, by erasing it and then adding over Allah is, they now have amalgamated or they have corresponded with the Hush 1924 24, text. Okay. So that's, a that's an obvious censorship there. Here's the, another example, example number 9. This is Surah 42, verse 5. Sorry. Now we're back to the Petropolitanus, the yeah. BNF in the National, uh, National Library there in Pahi. The words Al-Rahim, the merciful, were omitted in the original and now have been added at a later time. So the, originally it used to say, and Allah is the forgiving. Now it says, and Allah is the forgiving, the uh, merciful. merciful. This now corresponds so they, with So they the forgot that Allah was merciful, and then later they remember Allah is merciful, therefore they edit. Obviously the merciful was added as a date, later date, uh, and that's why they now had to correct it. So example number 10. This is Surah 2, verse 137. We're still, still on the Petropolinus. Yeah, and this is, this is intentional insertion. Here is an insertion, and the word is mithli, or as. Um, it was, sorry, be mithli, uh, mithli was first, was omitted uh, when it was first written, and then was added at a later time, along with the pre preceding B, the little B with the little dot below it, using a completely different handwriting. Look at number one, you'll see what I'm look at, uh, talking about, where the arrow is from number one and a much narrow nib. So you can see it's obvious that this is a much narrow nib. You can see the B there with a uh, B with a kasr at the bottom, B mitli. Uh, then you see over here, it not only, interestingly, not only is it in a different nib, it's much narrow. Take a look and you will see that the vowels and the diacritical marks are added as well. So that shows it is not written by same hand and same time. It was written later and in, intentionally in edited in it. And, and Dan Brubaker says this is probably done in modern times. Yeah. Because now let's look at number two at the bottom there. That's him. Number two. Now look at the, take a look at number two. The B, which was first written, was linked along the letter Ma and has not, not been erased. So here the B, which is over here, is actually here. So it's double. They have two Bs when they shouldn't. That one was there to begin with. And so what has happened, fascinating, so the, uh, what, what's fascinating, the portion now reads, Amanu bimithli bima, which is an incorrect and non-viable reading. You can't have that. It doesn't make any sense. So you can see they should have erased this B when they wrote that B in there, but they've kept that B in there, so now they have two Bs too many. Two Bs too many. I better be careful of that. So if they believe in that which you have believed was the original, now it says, if they believe similarly to that which you have believed. So what we have is... Example after example, we see how human beings stepped into the Quran and Quranic manuscripts try to sta standardize, standardize. standardize the Quran. So thanks to the human beings try to make one, uh, help out one perfect Quran. So the intention you're saying is these are intentional changes. Yeah, sorry. These are human <laughs> intentional changes. Yeah. So um, example 11, this is Surah 66 verse Eight. Now we're coming back to the top kappa. This is the one that's Remember, in Istanbul. Yeah, one of the earliest um, Quran, Quranic manuscripts. Yeah, it is dated to the early 8th century. Parts of it are dated after 721, so up until the mid 8th century, even as late as 770. All people need to know, this is not the Quran of Muhammad. This is not the Quran of Uthman. It's it is much, century. much, much later. So yeah. what is the problem with this okay, one? Number one, look at number one there with the yellow. This insertion of Lam Lam He. Uh, Allah occurs near the beginning of the verse since originally the first Allah of this verse was not present. Okay, so the Lam Lam He, you can see right over here. Now we brought this one up on the ladder. Uh, this is the one we actually introduced on Sunday. And uh, the response to this is all you need to do is find another text that precedes it that actually has Lam Lam He in it. 
and you very cleverly quickly went up and you looked at the only other manuscript that precedes it is the Sanaa Sana manuscript. And you went to look and see, and, and actually chapter 66 is not even the Sana. The entire <laughs> chapter is missing. Yeah, so um, anyway, um, example 11 shows us there are intentional insertion to the earliest Quranic manuscripts. So it says, O you who believe, this is what it said earlier, before the Allah was put in, turn to a sincere uh, repentance. And currently it now says, O you believe, turn to Allah with sincere repentance. Can you see that's a theological distinction, a theological difference? Yeah, you can make a case, was it Muhammad or was it who? Okay, look but, at number two now. Now look at number two. Yep. It's down, you can see where the long arrow is there, the green arrow. Notice the original Aleph after the Ila or uses a completely larger nib, suggesting an error to the original text. The new change has been made with a very small nib and is probably a modern intervention. Now, with that new nib, with a smaller nib, adding that Allah off in the margin, it now corresponds with the 1924 text. So the Allah was there from the beginning. Why? What in the world? What, what, what word were they, were they intending? So intentional insertions to the earliest Quranic manuscripts. Example 12. This is Surah 3, verse 171. Okay, this is the Petropolinus again. Uh, this is the one that's in Pahi. And look at number one. The you Dadlan. Mean Paris. Paris? Okay. Yeah. The you say like differently. National, uh, the Bibliothèque Nationale. You say Pahi. Pahi is the way okay. they say it in French. Sorry. Okay, okay. I speak French. So sometimes I say Paris like okay, you say, or Pahi, Paris. Like I, the way I say it. Okay. Both are correct, by the okay. way. <laughs> okay. Chapter 3, verse 171. You have the Dadlam of the Fadlin, bounty, has been written over an eraser. That's hugely damaging. The corrector has used a different nib and ink than, used, than was used in the original. Also, the hand was at an angle of the script is different than the rest of the page. Can you see the angle? And take a look. It has about five or six letters that are underneath that have bled through. Have you noticed that? Yeah. The letters have not been totally erased. They're bleeding through, proving that there was a, a, an original text there. And only the, oh, these two letters, the Dad and Lam, have been added and elongated. Look at the, how long they are to try to cover over as if to try to fool the reader. So at this stage, we don't know what is under it, but technology is growing. One day we will know what they intended to write, which people tried to get rid of it. Dan says that there's about 5 to 11 original letters that have been erased. Yeah. Uh, these include four upward extending letters, the first of which is preceded by a short tooth letter. Now, this correction is clearly a much later intervention. And now, obviously, as we've been saying over and over again, conforms to the 1924 Puffs text. Okay. Example 13. Sorry, Jake. That's Example right. 13. This is Surah 34, verse 35. From two different manuscripts. The one on the left is from the Marcel manuscript in St. Petersburg there in Russia. The one on the right is from the Petropolitan manuscript uh, there in Paris. And if you notice, look at, let's look at number one and number two, the yellow number one and number two. In the first example uh, from the Marcel, the Russian manuscript, the final Lam of Kala, he said, has been erased and in its place Lam Wau Aleph has been written, which now makes it plural. So now it says Kalu, they said. So here is a here. I mean, you could almost do a doctoral thesis on this. It's been changed from kala, erased, and then written over top with kalu. They said. So currently it says, and they said, we are more than you in wealth and in children, which now conforms to the Hafs text. In the second example, the one on the right, from the in the Petropolis manuscript, we find the exact same chain, erasing the kalu. He said and replace it with kalu. They said. This now reconforms. So you can see we're looking where Dan is giving us two different manuscripts with the same problem, both erasures, taking the singular and making it plural. So we are looking at the history of the Quran by human beings. So this is our 14th example. This is Surah 4, verse 167. This is the third example of the top copy that's in Istanbul. And here you have, look at. Uh, there, are uh, there has been erasure of two and possibly three words just in this picture. Number one, let's look at the first one. Here is an erasure of the first letter of Allah. Yep. You see the green arrow? See the green arrow there? You can just barely see it, very indistinct. There is the first letter for the name Allah. That has been erased. Now, number two, the second on the next line shows the shadow of what was first written, which was Allah Allah has already. There's the blue arrow. See where the blue arrow is? Allah, he cut. It's still enough there to see what had been erased. 
Now the original said, surely those who disbelieve and hinder from the way of Allah have strayed far into error. Currently, it now says, surely those who disbelieve and hinder from the way have strayed far into error. So Allah of Allah is missing. So they've taken Allah out. So in one case, remember we saw nine yep. Allahs have been added in? Now we see that the Allah has been taken out. So they had this too much correct, Allah. They, they had, had too many Allahs. Now this one had to be taken out. And why? What's the reason? To make that standard, uh, standardized with 1924. Correct? 1924. Before we leave, I just want to show you, Dan's pointing out number three. See the yellow arrow? Look at, you can see another eraser. This is yet another eraser. He hasn't had time to look at this. So this will come out as another uh, variant in the next, uh, his next copyright, his next so printing. As we see people intentionally trying to make the Quranic manuscript standardized, same with the standardized Quran, we see how important it was to the Muslims, their oral tradition as well as their textual tradition. So if it wasn't that important, then they wouldn't kind of intentionally try to dig into it and cor do corrections on it. Okay. Example 15 Here's a, is a Surah 24, verse 33. This is another very damn... I wish we'd had this one and looked at it on the ladder on Sunday because, this, I mean, it's so clear what's going on here. Can you notice, look at the green arrow, there's an eraser, and then look at the blue arrow, almost an entire line has... Well, no, a half, half a line. A quarter. A quarter, okay, quarter line. But can you see the eraser, they're not even trying to hide it. It's obviously that they have erased a good number of words there. No, they're trying, they're trying to hide what was written. They're trying to hide what was written, okay, but they're not doing a very good job of it. Now, what's fascinating, um, it, it begins, it, the, the first eraser at the top, uh, the green arrow, yeah. it begins, begins after uh, the word fadlihi, or his grace. And at the bottom then, with their blue line, it, it, it ends before wa aladina, and those who. We can't know what was written. There's no way to know what they have written there. It would be nice. Maybe later on it might bleed yeah, through. As the technology grows, we might be develops able to that it. we might be able to figure but out. But it's obviously this is now supports and corresponds with the Huff's 1924 so text. So example 16, this is Surah 4, verse 33. This is Cairo manuscripts. Now this is the Musaf al-Sharif in Cairo, Cairo or the Husseini manuscript, uh, the famous one. That was one of the six that are they're highlighted by al Kulic and Ekmel al Nisanalu. Uh, here you have the Kana is was omitted when this manuscript was first written. Only the first two letters are visible. And look see where the green arrow is uh, in this facsimile photograph. Though the full word Kana was presumably originally inserted there, written with a very fine nib. Now currently it says, and Allah has power over all things. That now corresponds to the 1924 text. That, what I would say, you could say, is a copyist error, possibly. That would be the closest thing that the, 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 the fellow on the ladder on Sunday yeah. kept on hammering us up with. I would be one that I could possibly could agree with, but it's rather crude and rather inept. So example 17, this is Surah 33, verse 9. Here we get back to Allah again, where they've got to write the word Allah. It's an eraser overwritten with Allah. In this is the Marcel manuscript. Marcel manuscript yeah. from St. Petersburg in Russia. All but the first two letters of Nimat Allah, the favor of Allah, has been written over an eraser. Notice the different nib. Can you see very clearly? It's a different nib. It's a different color. It's a different ink. And also it's written in the hand of another scribe, a different scribe. It's also bunched together in order to get into the space that's provided. That's what I do when I do, if I'm going to write something and if I'm doing like, don't know how to spell the word on the whiteboard, I make them write real close small. to one another. <laughs> you write real small, yeah. So you can see, that's, that's, that's what humans do. We bunch them together uh, when we're trying to change them or get them in the space that's provided. So, Nimitli, his favor, now it says uh, the favor of Allah. It, it now conforms with the 1924 Huff's text. Okay. Example 18, this is intentional insertion to Surah 6, verse 40. Again, with the Marcel manuscript there in St. Petersburg. Uh, and this is, a, again, a, the hour has been added at a later date above the line. It's done with a narrow nib. It's also, therefore, proving that it's done by a different scribe at a later date. Originally, so it's written, someone wrote it, and then someone else stepped in later and then add the word. Yeah. Okay. Now, Originally, it used to say, tell me if, uh, say, tell me if Allah's torment comes upon you or comes upon you, would you then call upon and so-and-so. Now it says, 
tell, say, tell me if Allah's torment comes upon you or the hour comes upon you. That now conforms with the Hafs text. Okay. Here's so, Allah once again, number 19. Number 19, example number 19, this is Surah 34, verse 27. This is on the Marcel manuscript, which is in St. Petersburg. The word Hua Allah, He is Allah, has been written over top of another word which has been erased. So here they've erased something else and they've added Hua Allah. We will not know what the original word was that they erased. Although what we do know now is that by erasing whatever was there previously and adding Hua Allah, there's Hua, there's Allah, it now conforms with the Hafs 1924 text. This is example number 20, Surah 8, verse 3. Now here's an eraser overwritten. Uh, uh, in fact, it's an in full line. And this, uh, if you take a look at it, you will see that you can see the eraser very clearly. And you can see the line that has been written over top. It's in much darker ink. See where the green, green arrow is pointing? It's in much darker ink and also in a different nib. Now, we, we have no idea what the original phrase was that was erased. Currently, it says, Wamima Razak Nahum Yung Fikun, which is, and out of what we have provided him, them, masculine, they, masculine, spent. Notice that the initial Aleph of the following verse is also added. If you look here, you can see the Aleph over here has now been added. That will be the Surah 8, verse 4. So this now conforms with 1924. The Huff, 1924. Now we're going to do two more. These are the last two, and these are the two I asked Dan to put in his book. And I, as far as I'm concerned, Hatun, this is the stuff, these are the ones that are by far the most damaging. These are what we call coverings. So this is um, Surah 2, verse 191 to 193. This is the Husseini text. Yeah, example from Cairo. From Cairo. Can you number them? Look at, I mean, there's so many. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight different coverings. Intentionally, they wanted to cover what was written. They put something on it to cover it so that people do not have access as well as it matches with the 1924 Quran. There are so many coverings here, Hatun, that you can't read the lines. rest of what is left behind. It just looks like chicken scratches. It's so difficult to it's read. It's only 12 lines with eight coverings. In fact, Dan says what's left behind now supports the 1924 Hafs text. But yeah. can you see, this is wholesale censorship. Yeah, so you can check this out. This is Surah 2, verse 191 to 193. And la latest, last example is example number 22. Again on the Husayni. Surah 13, verse 11 to 12. And this one is interesting because uh, look at number one. On the first line pictured, all but the first two letters of bi an uh, or in themselves of uh, Surah 13, I 11, has been written on top of such a taping. So you can see that's been written over top of it. What's underneath? What was it replacing? Wouldn't Allah you love knows. to be able to... Lift it up and see what's under. Maybe someday we can do that. On the second to last uh, line picture, all but the initial aleph of Aladi Yurikum, he who shows you, of chapter 13, verse 12, has similarly been written over a taping, and you can see it's stretched out. Can you see? It's been elongated. The stretching is not unusual in this manuscript, but it is much more stretched uh, than uh, at this spot than in standard form of the original scribe. It is pronounced in this spot more pronounced than is standard, um, and so therefore it is probably that they uh, that, that they had to do this in order to correspond with the 1924 Hafs edition. What example? What about example number three? Number three on the final line, you have what tama tama a and hope of chapter 13 verse 12, which has also been written over a taping. In all three cases, we cannot know what was initially written. But we can see that the new corrections over top all correspond with the Hafs Kyrene 1924 text. Who knows what was written there? Who knows what was written there? Who knows what was written there? Who knows? Obviously, it's, you can see the coverage quite easily. It's obvious that, and, and look at one other thing. Notice how, not, how stylized these are, how elongated these are compared to the original scribe. Well, so it is amazing that um, in the book we do have 22 examples. And it simply just tells us how human beings intentionally stepped in to the inter to internal word of Allah to make it one same with the one perfect Quran. Yeah. 
History of the Quran by human beings. History of the Quran by human beings. And that's why it's so important that we not only introduce these to you, take each one of these. These are just the first 22. There are going to be 4,000 that are yet to come. So 3,970 no, on this because way. Every year he's actually adding to it. I mean, there's so many more yet to do. Remember, you have all, when I first uh, was using your material on the diacritical differences, I was up to 59,000. I really got myself in a, in a jam by introducing that in Poland. And then you told me it's now 93,000. So there's no way we can just sit, put, keep it yeah. at one number. It will keep expanding, keep expanding and enlarging as we go. Those textual variations are okay because we know books are written by human beings. But the um, problem steps in when we say our, the scripture we are reading is perfectly preserved as well as like just... Examples shows actually, as time went on, they decided to perfectly preserve. Okay. As time what? went on, they tried to put it together so people can have access to only one version of the okay, Quran. Okay, so let's go ahead, and, and we've been saying over and over and over again, so it corresponds with the 1924 Hafs text. What are we talking about here? Remember, we did say we would come back to this. Hatu, what is this 1924 Hafs text? So, um, we do have um, Imam Hafs who died around 796 um, in Kufa, who never met Muhammad, who never so met... 144 with, years after Muhammad. Yeah, who never met with Muhammad, who never met with any of the caliphs or the Sahabais. Yeah. Kufa is just south of Baghdad in Iraq. Yeah, so the current Quran we are reading is actually attributed to him. Attributed to Hafs. Hafs. How, how and why was... He chose it. And hold on a minute. Hafs, um, if you have Hafs, were there any other contemporaries to Hafs? You mean different People who than were living Hafs? at the same time who had other Qurans? Yeah, yeah, so we do have lots of different readings of the Quran um, from the same time. Fact, For example... Why don't you just put up this, this, this uh, the thing that you put together. You put a great diagram of all these different... These yeah, diff that, that needs to be updated, but I'll put the current version there. Put it up there right now. Take a look yeah. at it. And what do you notice? There's lots of names here. Yeah, so one of the names is the Hafs. The current Quran Muslims are reciting goes to the Hafs Quran. It's approximately 95% of the Muslim world recites the Hafs Quran. Oh, Alongside of that, we do have the Warsh Quran, and then we do have the Duru Quran, which is recited in the different part of the Muslim world. But the Hafs Quran, according to the Islamic sources, um, which has been officialized in 1924. Wait, 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 wait. By Hold on, I, I'm going to dispute that. It wasn't official. Can I finish my sentence? I'm going to hang you if you say it wrong. <laughs> so um, the reason for that was because Ottoman... By the way, when I say hanger, I don't mean physically hanger. I just mean a hanger idea. I, I know you are Christian. You can't do that. All you can do is you have to love me. That doesn't matter. Um, so... Um, in around 1924, when uh, by that time in 1600s, 1700s, Ottoman Empire was pretty big because we used to love share, we used to love sharing life with other people by conquering their land and converting them to Islam. So they were using the Hafs Quran. In 1924, in Cairo, they put together, um, they made one official Quran for Cairo and in why? 1924. Why? Because as people were doing their exams, they Which were pro students. High school students. So as they were putting together their exams, they were using the different version of the Quran. So the Department of Education, only in the city of Cairo, take note, only in the city of Cairo, needed to find one standard test because they couldn't standardize all the tests because all the different answers were, they were getting so many different answers from so many different Qurans, from so many different recitations, that they went to Muhammad uh, uh, Ibn al-Haddad who is a professor at Al-Azhar University, considered to be the foremost university in the Islamic world still today. And they asked Al-Haddad if he would come up with one, just one, that they could standardize for all the tests only in Cairo. And he came up with the Hafs one. He didn't say why. Um, also, just a side note, we know there were five different Hafs when they put together so the Ottoman Hafs. Hafs. So use? they used the Ottoman Hafs. Um, but anyway, so that um, has been done in for Cairo, uh, and then in so what, 1930. What did they do next after they did that? 
1935? No, no. What did they do next in 1924? Is that the, like they sunk into the... They took all the remaining, any other ma ma uh, Quran that disagreed with it. So this is pretty serious for as far as they're concerned. The others disagreed with it. They took them out into a boat and they sunk them into the Nile. Where do we read this, Jay? This is in Gabriel said Reynolds. Yeah, that's one, of the, that's one of the uh, no, favorite... Noseda has also written it, uh, uh, written it. So two different sources you can get this from. Yeah, and I we'll, put the, we'll put the bibliography at the bottom of the screen. Yeah, here. I think page two or something. It's just that the, beginning, of look, the beginning of the book anyway. Look at the bottom here, you'll see it right. We have it written there. So please go. Don't trust us. We could be making it up. So in 1924, they took all the other Qurans that did not agree and they sunk them in oil. But remember, we have a story like that with Uthman, don't we? Yeah, so they've done something which Uthman did. And well, Uthman burned them. Now they're sinking them. No, well, both of them, they are trying to get rid of it. Getting rid of the evidence. So, so, 1936 now. We now jump to 1936. Between 1924 and 1936, there are seven different derivations. So it's changed seven times, according to Gabriel said Reynolds. So even that is not the same one in 1936 that they had in 1924. But because the model was so successful in Cairo, in 1936, the Egyptian government decided to make it Egypt-wide so that all the high schools all over Egypt would have just one text, the Hafs text. Yep. Okay? Okay. Let me... So that was the story of the 1936 Quran. So 1936, it was called the Farouk edition. Yep. Given a name because King Farouk became king in 1936 to commemorate his, uh, his ascendancy to the Rome, throne. In, after 1936, be, seeing how successful the Egyptian model was, King Fahd over in Saudi Arabia in 1985. How old are you? Were um, you born? I, after? I, I have been 18 for a long time. Okay, so you weren't born yet. But I was quite old by 1985. <laughs> I, I, I was all, born by I was, I was that already time. 32 years old by this time. In 1985, King Fahd in Saudi Arabia decided to make the Hafs text worldwide the standard text. That's 34 years ago. So I am older than Hafs Quran. Oh, you, you are, are old, older. Okay. You are, so am I. you are older than Hafs Quran. I am older. In fact, I would imagine many of you who are watching this, you're older than the Quran if you're older than 34. So 1984 is the date. 1985. Five. So 1985 is the date where Hafs Quran become worldwide official. Worldwide the standard. So, and that is the Quran today Muslims are reciting. That's that is the Quran right you are buying. I do have in my room right different, here. in my study room, different version of the uh, dates of the Hafs yeah. Quran. But anyway, so that's the, according to the, today's um, tradition, how did we have the, our Muslims, how did Muslims have their Quran? 1985. Now, I'm going to do something. Keith Small used to do this. He said, when you compare the Bible with the Quran, the textual traditions, the Bible is like this, whereas the Quran is like this. Unpack that. What I mean is the Bible, the very first text, codices, that were exactly the same. Yeah, so there because no when we look at the many scripts evidence for Bible, we also need to remember Bible is put, into, put together under the persecution and people were giving up their life for the biblical manuscripts. You have the Edict of Diocletian in 300 AD where they, all the Bibles that were uh, existing at that time were supposed to be destroyed, burned, or thrown into the Oxyrhynchus uh, uh, pits, uh, trash pits. And fascinating, so, but let's, back to this, the, Keith Small talks about the fact that the earliest Bibles all agreed, every one of them agreed. Yeah. As with the Diocletian, as they got to destroyed and many Bible people, they had to quickly write about and hand them over to each other. You start to get variants that start to appear. Not very yep. many, but so more and more variants were appearing in. So that's why it's important that you go back to all the manuscripts and find all the ones. Yep. 5,300 Greek manuscripts. 5,852 5, Greek manuscripts oh, today. Oh, you. you got better than I do. So say it again, 5,000. 5, 5,853, Greek manuscripts. How many Latin Vulgates? Uh, 10,000 I last heard, of, yeah. and 9,000 in other languages. Yeah. Add that right up there, and you can see about 24, 25,000 manuscripts. So you have all the manuscript traditions up here. Now, within those 24,000 manuscript traditions, you will find there are some variants, and usually there is one variance that introduced. Let me give you the example uh, in, 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 the, in the book of Matthew. You have the reference to Jesus going to the upper room. 
if you look at in, in, in the uh, P46, which is in Dublin, uh, the, uh, the Dublin um, Chester Beatty yeah. Chester Beatty Man, uh, Chester Beatty Museum in Dublin, you will see the P46 there. In it says it just says it went into the twelve disciples went to the upper room. If you look at the manuscripts that come later, the word twelve disciples is added. The 12 went to the upper room is what's on the P46. Yeah. Now the word disciples has been added. Now 100,000 manuscripts have been have come after that that include the word disciples. Bart Ehrman says he, 100,000 errors. Because he adds all of those that include That's the word 5, disciples. That's 5,000, yeah. And now let me ask you, if it's he went to the upper room with the 12 or he went to the upper room with the 12 disciples, does that change the meaning? No, it doesn't change the meaning. But here's the thing. Christians have been open about history of the day scripture how many like i take the bible and then it tells me this book has the textual variations in it i i can go to the bookshop and buy the critical edition of the new testament and it all shows me how my my scripture is reliable how it is reliable versus when it when we come to the islam something goes wrong along the way not only something goes wrong. Lots of things goes if wrong. If <laughs> we can come up with 22 just quick ones that we have out of 4,000 on the earliest manuscripts, Keith says, well, what we're finding out is the Quran is like this. All the earliest manuscripts disagree. Differ yeah, different from one another. As the time goes on, and suddenly it becomes... And as they closer, they start to agree. Then they get closer, and then they agree. Finally, in 1985, which is the top, they now all agree. But that's 1985, 34 years ago. At the very beginning, all the manuscripts disagreed. It takes them 1,400 years to finally canonize the text. In our case, ours was canonized at the very beginning. What you do have are, and more people wrote it, they had a word here, because you can see that one scribe wanted to put disciples in there so we knew what 12 they are. But thinking in the years to come, they won't know what 12 we're talking about. Let's just emphasize again, textual variations are okay because human beings wrote them in the different conditions. But the, the, point, the problem is the claims people make about the yearbook. See, that is the issue. We would never claim that our Bible is eternal. We would never claim our Bible was sent down. We would claim it was complete at the very beginning, like the Muslims claim. But we would also claim that there are variants. We would know there's textual, textual variations, variations that do appear at, uh, all, all the way through. But we know where the textual variants are because we have such a corpus of manuscripts, 24,000 manuscripts, 2,135 2, lectionaries from the 6th century, over 19,800 translations in 11 different languages. We have them all at our disposal. And then you have the 86,900 early church fathers' quotations, 36,000 that predate the 4th century before the first complete manuscript comes into existence. When you look at all of them together, we pretty well know 99.9% .9 of the Bible is absolutely accurate. That's why it all comes up uh, for us. It comes up like this. We now we now know where the the manuscript. Also, episode. it's helpful to remember, Jay, the circumstances biblical manuscripts are written was very different than the is Quranic manuscripts. In the first century, we didn't have the technology which people had in seventh century. Well, be careful. We did have the technology. We did have we, parchment did exist in the first century. You will find animal skins. What we didn't have was the finance to have parchment to have vellum. You needed to be very wealthy. Yeah. So we didn't have the the wealth. What is the wealth? People so we had, had in seventh Pormans. century. We had to use Pormans paper, and that was that was papyrus. Yeah. which are interlocking leaves uh, that you hammer out and dry. So that's all that you had. Now, papyrus, it disintegrates within 100 years. And today what we have actually is, which uh, from the papyrus are just a miracle how they survive. Yeah, yeah. P52 is one of the, our earliest examples, dated only 35 years after um, it is written down, which it is written down in Turkey, yet we find that in Egypt. So it's, it tells a lot about the history of the Bible. But as I said, we do not make the same claim Muslim makes about because their book. Because by the book. time this book was written down, they didn't use any papyrus. There was no need to, because they were in ascendancy. They controlled. Uh, these were written by caliphs. Caliphs, by the time Abu Bakr... They were pretty rich, thanks were to the rich. jizyas and thanks, thanks to the zakats. Abdul Malik, by the time he comes to power in 685, all the way from Spain to India was under his control. When uh, Uthman comes to power, 
Look at those nine cities. Those are huge cities. They were wealthy cities. There's no reason not to have parchment. And in fact, they're, they are, they were all, all of the earliest manuscripts are written on parchment. Animal skins. It takes a very wealthy person to be able to have animal skins. Look at the Sinaiticus that we have in the British Library. Uh, that's the size of the, that's a New Testament, the size of the Quran. That took 62 gazelle deer skins of 62 gazelles to just make that one codex. Now you can see why in the earliest manuscripts of the Quran, they are all written on manu uh, animal skins. There is no reason not to have them today. They don't disintegrate. Animal skins don't disintegrate. That's why it's so important to have people, things like the Sinaiticus and the Alexandrinus, and to, for that matter, the six manuscripts that we have for the Quran, all of them written on animal skins. They're as pristine today as the day they were written down. The problem is every one of them has manuscript variants. Every one of them has corrections. Not one of them is complete. Not one of them is from the time of Uthman. And most importantly, every one of them disagrees with the Quran we have in our hand today, except it, where these corrections have been made. As you, um, you expressed that um, we don't have um, complete, perfect Quran from time of Uthman, I just want to express how I am sorry actually to hear not only Christians, but also Muslims gave up the Quran of Muhammad. They gave up the Quran of Abu Bakr. Now they are trying to figure out some things which can they link with the Uthman. It is sad actually when you look at the Islamic tradition. They gave up the first two Qurans. Now officially I, we would say they gave up their third Qurans as well. They are trying to go back to the 8th century. Well, isn't it fascinating, Hatun? Whenever Muslims come across Qurans that disagree, what do they do? First of all, they burn them. Secondly, <laughs> they wash them. Sink Thirdly, them. <laughs> they sink them. Burn, wash, and sink. It seems to me that's the only result, that's the only thing they can do to, dis to eradicate the evidence. We do know that the palimpsest of the Sana manuscript was washed yep. and then written over top. So if you don't like what you have written, wash it, thinking no one can see it. That bleeds through centuries later, as we're now finding. And that's why Asma Hilali now has come up with the 63 verses that have bled through. So, so the bottom line is, I think this Quran makes a claim about eternity of Muslims as well as eternity of Christians. Teachings of the Quran contradicts the teachings of Jesus, teachings of the Bible. Yep. Therefore, we need to examine it. Therefore, we need to look into it to see actually can this be the word of God? One of the ways we do that. We look at the claims it makes and as well as we look at the history of the Quran. And what we saw is, thanks Dan Brubaker's work, is actually Quran has a human history with it. And corrections are cor after corrections, which has been done intentionally to put everything together and make standardize everything. So the Quran was written by men? The Quran was corrected by men? And the Quran for was men. canonized by men. And for men. So can you see all the way through, it's had human intervention. Now they have only this book to go on. This is the only book they have. This is their primary revelation. That's why they make the claim that it's eternal. That's why they make the claim that it was sent down. That's why they make the claim that it was complete. And that's why they make the claim that it was unchanged. We would not make that claim about the Bible per se, except for the third claim. It was complete in its original text. But this is not our only word of God, is it? We do have living word of God, Lord Jesus Christ. Now, is he eternal? He is eternal. He is unchanged. Was he sent down? He was sent down. He's is he complete? Yes, he was. And he's, he's unchanged. So the very thing, the four claims they have made about this Quran, they can no longer. Not after this book has come out. And many more that are going to come out after this. No longer can they say that this book is eternal, uncorrupted, complete, and unchanged, and sent down. Pretty much you're going to have to say this is nothing more than a man-made book. And we would say this is a man-made book inspired by God. Inspired by the Holy But Spirit. written by men. Yep. But the, this book points to a bigger, a bigger word of God. A bigger logos. Jesus Christ. That's why I love it, the fact that Amen. it's passed every test. It's passed the redaction criticism. It's passed source criticism. It's passed literary criticism. It's passed every test for 120, almost coming on to 150 years. It's passed every one of the historical tests. 
That's why I love standing behind it. That's why we use it. And that's why we put it up on the, when we're on the ladder and we show which is the bigger, the better. Book. And that's why we want people to follow it. There we want go. people to follow the living word of God. We want people to obey the living word of God. We want people to fall in love with the living word of God. This has been fun. Thanks, Hatun. Finally, not having people yell and make all kinds of noise <laughs> around us. We can actually get out our message. And it's been terrific. Also, realize... Thanks for coming, Jane. We're going to get some feedback on this. And we want feedback. We want all of you to listen those Muslims who are listening to us right in the comments below tell us what's wrong with what we've said this is called peer review peer review is we want you as peers to come back try this try to come out of a response where is that original Quran 114 surahs as Hatun says from the time of Uthman unchanged don't point to the mid 8th century. Don't point to 721 like our friend did on the ladder on Sunday. And don't say that's only 97% by the time of the 721, the 8th century. Don't do that. We, your claim is that this book goes right back to Uthman. Your claim is this book was complete at the time of Uthman. Your claim is this book has not changed since 652. We don't have to defend that. That's so nice that we don't have to defend our Bible. But it does defend itself. God bless you. It's been great to be with you. Thanks for coming all the way out I of London. All the way from the <laughs> United States just to be with you here. And of course on the ladder on Sunday. You've got to repent for that one. That one. But anyway, thanks for joining us. Yes. And as Jay said, um, beside that, please get the book. <laughs> get the book, read it, make use of it. And um, we pray that as Dan Burubekir put this together, that God will use it for his kingdom. Amen. God bless you all. God bless you.